What's up nerds, welcome back. Today I'm going to be talking about a book that I almost decided not to do a review for because it's kind of long, but it is a good story and I've been enjoying what's coming out of the Radiant Black universe. So yes, today we will be talking about Supermassive. So yeah, as I mentioned, this book is, it's pretty thick, I'm not gonna lie, it, it has a lot of heft to it, it's perfect bound, as you can see, so I mean, that kind of gives you another indication just how many pages there are in here, and super massive, it definitely lives up to that name, but we're just gonna go ahead and jump right into it, because like I said, it's pretty long, so this review will probably end up being pretty long, just as I'm try I'm gonna try to condense it as much as I can, but I can only do so much without dropping out things that you do need to see in order to actually understand what happened all the way through to the end, so... Let's just get right into it. Anyway, one thing I will say before I do start, this is going to involve not just only Radiant Black, but two new characters that we haven't seen before. So let's go ahead and see what we have here. Anyway, we start on this little foresty type of thing, and we have a, a deer here who gets encountered by an alien that kind of, um, it just, it scares it away. So we see where these two kind of like pop into the thing. And this character, her name is Inferno Red. She kind of breaks out of this crystal-like formation, and then as the other monster is kind of, like, slithering away, she's like, no, no, this isn't right, and she's telling it, like, you knocked us off course. For what? What does this get you? So, she goes and she tries to attack it, but then she gets distracted as well, and it kind of, it takes off. So, this is where we come to this backpacker explorer. I can't remember exactly what it is he's doing, but anyway, he's, oh, he hears on the radio, it says, you're close. He's like, well, you said that 10 minutes ago. It says, and 10 minutes ago, you were. I'm sorry that interdimensional energy isn't more predictable. So he's like, well, the fact that we picked up on this in advance, too. And then the guy who's on the other side of the radio says, anything that gets us off radiance is a game changer. So he's like, well, we have to find it first. And he says, I have faith in you not being an idiot, Jace. At the very least, if you can get all the fuel cells you've got on you charged with whatever this energy is, we can avoid the helmets for a few more weeks. So he's like, all right, but what if this doesn't work? You're taking the next three destin the next three detections. So that's when he he has the the giant monster run up on him as well, and he starts trying to run away. He's like, no, 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 no. And then, of course, you know, the other one just kind of hears him, and he hears his distress, so he's like, Jace? Jace, and then we see where, yeah, he gets killed by the thing as it's, there's a crunch sound, so I'm assuming that it ate him, but then we get, like, the title opening talking about Supermassive, and then we come over to the next thing, we're now in New Orleans, Louisiana, four hours ago, so four hours before what we just saw, and so we can see where this person is standing here saying, this river and all the souls upon it are mine, stand in my way, fiery night, and you shall accompany them to the next world, this is where we get introduced to the new next, the next new hero words are sometimes hard so let's hope we don't have too many of them in here anyway so he's saying Charon, we've done this far too many times for you not to have learned my name by now though i have if though i have hit you in the head a lot for the last time i am rogue son and this realm is off limits to you and your kind so he's telling him like you know i can either take you into custody or just burn your face off which one is it going to be so he just says, all right, yeah, I give up. So he's like, see, there are still a few brain cells left in there. So he kind of like deals with that situation. And then he's on the phone, I'm assuming, with his girlfriend. And she's saying, is that the guy with the ore? He's, uh, she asks, what was he up to this time? He says, trying to abduct some tourists off a riverboat casino for some soul ritual or something. I don't know. We never got that far. But I was calling because I already dropped him off with Dottie. So... I'm grabbing a bottle of wine in my flight home, and you're paying Ari to get Brock out of the house. She's like, oh, don't worry, I'm way ahead of you. So she's saying, but you can't wear the hell the suit this time. He's like, oh, you gotta be kidding, because he gets another, like, you know, warning alert about something going on. She's like, all right, if it means that much, then you can go ahead and wear the helmet. He's like, no, 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 it's not that. You know, I just got the call again. She's like, really? Another one? So he's like, yeah, I know, and it's far, way outside of New Orleans. So she says, all right, fine, go be heroic. I'll be here waiting when you're done. So he says, I'll make it up to you. 
She's like, oh yeah, you're going to in so many ways. So now we go over to the characters that we know, which is going to be uh, Marshall and Nathan. And they're sitting in this movie theater in Lockport, Illinois. This is slightly less than four hours ago, obviously. But we can see the movie that they're watching is Spider-Man vs. E.T. Phone Home, which I thought was actually kind of funny. I was like, that was that was clever. I see what y'all were doing with the current movies. But anyway, we see where they're in the movie theater. They're, there's a whole bunch of people, and for whatever reason, they're being those guys where they're sitting there texting on their phones. So Nathan is asking, you know, like, what was it like? They're talking about, like, you know, when Marshall went to space because they see this whole, like, space scene playing out in front of him. And Marshall's like, no, way cooler. The ships were, like, pulsing. And it was so quiet, like, noise-canceling quiet. So he's just saying, like, I hate you. And he says, hey, you can't hate the epically great hero Radiant Black. Nathan tells him to piss off. Marshall says, for real, though, space is cool. Way cooler than we ever thought. So Nathan's telling him, like, I'm officially insanely jealous. And then his uh, his girlfriend is sitting next to him. She's like, if you don't put that away, I am literally going to kill you again. So he's like, all right, yeah, sorry. So Marshall says, says the guy with the red hot redhead who wants to kill him. And then, you know, he kind of like sketches out on the letters because he gets, you know, a summoning from the robot that, you know, lives within him, apparently. And it says, hello, Marshall, there is danger, maybe great. So he's like, OK, is this like super important danger? Because we've got a rebel change, a real change coming up. And he's like, an unknown energy signature has passed through realities and brought darkness. The matter is urgent. There are others, and the darkness grows. So he's like, others? Yeah, what the hell? I've got it on 4K. So he gets up to, like, take off or whatever. And then the girl is asking, where is he going? He's, <laughs> Nathan has to be like, ugh, probably somewhere awesome. So already we can tell Nathan's a little bit salty. Which, I mean, if you read, like, this Radiant Black from the very beginning, it started out with Nathan having the power. And then, you know, shenanigans ensued, and now he doesn't. So I'm waiting to see what's going to actually happen with him. But anyway, so now we go back over to Inferno Red, and she's running through trying to find the thing that got away from her. When finally a a light shows up behind her, and of course it is Rogue Sun. So she turns around, introduces herself. She says, oh, there it is, Inferno Girl Red. I forgot, they're doing very much the Super Sentai type of thing, where you just have like a bunch of words together. It's like, okay, that's very descriptive. But I feel like there is probably a different name you could have used, you know, in a different language that would have made it sound better. Anyway, so she says she's new to this universe and she's asking, you're like a goth flavored superhero or night themed demon. The outfit's a little ambiguous. He says, I'm the one who either sends you back to where you came from or takes you into custody. The state you're in when either of those two things occurs is up to you. So she's like, all right, well, edgelord attitude aside, we want the same thing. I didn't mean to end up in this world. I need to get back on track, find what I'm looking for, and then get back home as soon as I possibly can. But a monster came through with me, so it's on me to sort that whole situation out before I go. So he's like, oh, great, another incursion. Perfect. So he's like, well, you know what? Don't worry about it. I'll take care of it, and you just leave. Final warning. She's like, you'll handle it? You have no idea what you're dealing with here. And the danger, but he cuts her off. He says, this is what I do, and I've been doing it a long time. I don't need a child telling me about the danger. She's like, all right, I don't have time to deal with my responsibilities and massage your ego. So she's like, I'm just taking off. And he tells her to like stop, and then they both get stopped. She's like, wow, you really did stop me. Don't take this the wrong way, but freezing powers feel like they're a little incongruous with your whole goth fire vibe. But he tells her, yeah, that wasn't me. And then we see where Radiant pulls up, Marshall pulls up, and he's like, I can't believe you started the superhero crossover without me. This close to Chicago? Honestly, it's just rude. Gravity powers. Cool, right? So guessing you're the weird space thing my giant Jiminy Cricket robot warned me about. And she's like, well, I am from another dimension, but I'm not what you need to worry about. So he's like, all right, that's complicated. I love it. We'll get back to that in a second. Your rogue son. So he has to fanboy for rogue son for a second because he says, I saw you once all soaring high and stuff for Mardi Gras. At least I think I did. I was uh, also high flying. Nice. So he says, I, and I know you from screwing up so badly it made international news. So I was like, <laughs> yeah. Hey, weird question. Would you two follow me on Twitter? I'm trying to get that little blue tick, but they keep telling me I'm not. And then Rogue Sun is just like, enough. So he says, interdimensional forces are constantly testing the boundaries of this realm, searching for even the slightest gap. Every moment you're here increases the possibility of a breach. So Radiant's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. First of all, is that true? That's that's a lot, not gonna lie. Second, why don't you chill out for a second and try handling this like a human being? So he takes down the helmet, he introduces himself and says his incredibly cool superhero name is Radiant Black. He asks her her name, 
And she's like, well, I guess there's not much of a point hiding my identity in a completely different universe. So she introduces herself, Cassia Costa, Inferno Girl Red. And he's like, nice to meet you, Cassia. Anything we can do to help you get home? She's like, no, everything's fine. You know, I'm good to go. But I, as I kept trying to tell him, I can't go yet. Something came with me. I have to find it. There's no need for you two to be put in harm's way. And then they hear this, like, rumbling sound. So Nathan uh, Marshall is just like, well, at least that's convenient. So they turn around and they see this is one of Marshall's villains. He says, oh, God, this is one of my guys. Tech thieves with a twitch. Or maybe it's YouTube. They suck. The gear charges from, well, me. And then he, like, yells out to it, can this wait? We're in the middle of a whole thing here. But then we see where, no, it's not going to wait at all. So this thing continues to get even more disgusting looking as it transforms into this. And then Marshall's like, oh, my God. He's in Rogue Sun, finishes it by saying, no longer human. So he tells him, you know, don't worry about it. I'll handle this. And then Inferno Girl Red says, we'll handle this. So they take off while Marshall is still just there, you know, slack jawed. They take off flying. He's like, I just told you they're tech vampires powers. So that's where they all start attacking. And we could see where the thing is like charging up. So even he's just like, damn it, because he knows this thing is just absorbing his powers and it's absorbing all of their powers as we're about to see. So when Rogue Sun like completely just blasts the shit out of it, we see where it gets to 101% charged and then there's a giant explosion, which of course gives them all you know, a differing effect because this thing just absorbed all of their powers. So for Marshall, he sees this vision of, you know, just, I'm assuming this is his hometown completely destroyed. And then it kind of pulls out to show it looks like all of the Eastern United States, possibly just like on fire and shit. And so we can see where, you know, the cosmic aliens that he saw with well, that one time he was in space and like now they're all gathered here. And there's one that kind of looks like him, but a super Saiyan version I'm not sure what that is, but it speaks something in the other language. And then we go over to Inferno Girl Red. She's also having her own little, like, vision, seeing this blonde girl running. And then she's, like, being pursued by these crab monsters. And right before she gets attacked, like, they get attacked. And it says, you know, sorry, cut that one a little close, huh? And the other one says, but you don't need to worry. As long as we're around, you're safe. So we can see that they're different colors. One of them is obviously red. I'm assuming that's her. And then there's a blue and a green one. So her compatriots from her universe, I'd imagine. And then we go over to Rogue Sun. We see his little vision, which is, you know, just him dead i'm pretty sure because yeah marcus randolph bell i'm assuming that's him or it's someone that he failed to save because it says husband father hero so either that's him or you know someone else but he takes off the helmet and we see where he's literally just like on fire so kind of interesting everybody has their own little acid trip and then they kind of like come out of it and they're all depowered now so marshall's talking about like how much he hurts and we can see where the monster is kind of like whimpering as it got away so Cassia gets up. She's like, does everyone else feel like death? And then, of course, you know, Rogue Sun gets up. He's like, where's the beast? Did anyone see where it went? So Marshall's like, yeah, it kind of got away, like really far away. Also, not a fan of these guys, but damn. So that's where they all try to like power back up. And he says, I'll gain some altitude and see if I can spot it. And so what he has to do is grab this little stone thing and yell out Rogue Sun. But then he can see where, yeah, it's not actually working. And then she tries to do her thing where she says inferno ignite kind of like some power rangers type shit but it doesn't work for her either her either and then marshall tries to do his thing where his is just hey radiant where are you so that doesn't work either so everybody's just kind of freaking out she's like i can't lose my powers i can't be stuck here not now he's like oh you don't say i'm finally about to crush it as a superhero and what happens a power sucking super lizard seriously how can that affect a black hole so She's asking which way and when. He says, does it even matter? We'll never catch it like this. So she's telling him, like, well, it has our power, so we have to catch it. And then she's like, okay, it's okay. We can figure this out. Something that big moving that fast is going to attract a lot of attention. Shouldn't be too hard to follow. So Rogue Sun's just like, all right, well, then let's get out of the forest, find some transportation, and follow the trail and get our powers back however we can. So Marshall is there kind of like, all right, anyone ever hitchhiked before? But we see where they go over to... Uh, just a car rental place and rogue son is the one in there like signing for it he says your insurance covers giant monster attacks right to which the guy's like i'm sorry so the other two are outside and marshall's saying like his service sucks and she says hey marshall when our powers got all tangled together and exploded you didn't like see anything weird right to which she's like oh thank god i thought i was the only one i was hoping that somebody would actually like bring it up so he says secondly i mean 
I've seen some weird alien stuff before, but this was like all apocalyptic. Wait, did you see something different? She says, yeah, I saw monsters. So he's like, like Monsters Inc. or John Carpenter. She says, I don't know, but I wasn't fighting alone and in the sky. It was dark, but there weren't any stars. So he's like, yeah, that's definitely John Carpenter then. Absolutely terrifying. She's like, no, 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 it's a good thing. I think it means I'm going to make it home. So that's a weird thing to take solace in. But hey, whatever you can do to get yourself through a hard time. So we see where they're in the car together and they're listening to like the radio talking about like their sightings uh, suggesting that a giant creature has already traveled 400 miles in its journey west with damage estimates. And that's when Marshall kind of pipes up. He says, well, at least we know we're going the right way and we have time to figure out how to crack that battery egg and get our cosmic yoke back. Plus, I'm awesome at road trips. So we see where they go to a waffle house and she's asking like, so it's literally entirely made out of waffles. Marshall tries to tell her yes, but Rogue Son's like, no. So he's driving now as Rogue Son is asleep and he asks her like, do you want to drive? She's like, no, that's crazy. I've never driven before. So he's like, so what are they going to do? Mail you a ticket across dimensions, which fair point. And then we see where now they're like gassing up and Marshall's talking about it. But wouldn't it be insane if all our powers just came back for no reason and the entire gas station just exploded? So Rogue Son's just like, God, why am I here with these people? So now she is actually driving and she's saying, it's not as exciting as I thought it would be. He's like, yeah, it's really not. So again, they're still driving as she's in the, the back asleep now. And he's talking to Rogue Son, talking about while you were in the bathroom, the radio said there was another creature sighting about 30 miles north. So he's like, good, because I don't think I can handle another day in this car. And yeah, road trips always end up like that when they first start out like, OK, fun, you know, adventure, journey and all that shit. Once you're into it for a little while, you're just like, God, can we get there already? Like, it just, it becomes so tiring. Anyway, so Marshall's saying, right, look, can I ask, you've been doing this whole superhero thing, superhero world defender thing for like a long time, right? He's like, well, I'm not that much older than you. He says, I was just curious if it gets easier, you know, eventually, because when Cassia and I both got hit by the future vision blast thing, I'm pretty sure I saw what was coming, spaceships and robots and a... Uh, I don't know what, what he is, but he looked terrifying. You're telling me the only thing standing between Earth and total annihilation is me? The universe has a weird sense of humor, but he just tells him, I'm sorry, am I supposed to feel sorry for you? He's like, apparently not. So he kind of goes on saying, when I was eight years old, I woke up one night when I heard a crash from my parents' room. I get scared, so I run in, and there's my dad wearing the armor, drunk off his ass, and I watch as he backhands my mom. That's how I found out he was a superhero. So Marshall just tells him, like, oh, yeah, I could do 20 minutes on shitty parents. Got the cigarette burns and everything. Menthol. See, that right there, I hate menthol. As y'all know, I am a smoker. I have never been into menthol. Like, and, and this is such a shame because everybody that I know around me who does smoke, that's all they smoke. My mom, well, not my grandma. My mom smokes menthol. My best friend smokes menthol. Even my boyfriend, in the rare times that he wants a cigarette, he wants a menthol. I'm like, where did I go wrong? Like, I can't. Menthol? No. Anyway, so that's when Rogue Son is like, point is, he was a royal son of a bitch who didn't care about anybody but himself. And even he managed to save the world a few times. So that's where Marshall's asking, so like, did you see anything during that flash? But they kind of get interrupted when they come across all of this mayhem. So Cassia comes out and she's like, where are we? I'm sorry, I fell asleep. And he's like, I don't know, somewhere in North Dakota, I think. And Rogue's like, I hope you're feeling refreshed, kid. I have a feeling you're going to need it. And yeah, we can see where this thing is a lot bigger and causing a lot of destruction. So even Marshall's like, is it me or did it get bigger? And then she says, the monsters usually feed on the energy of regular people, but feeding on three types of superpowers. Yeah, I don't think it's going to stop growing anytime soon. So he's asking if it's grown that much, it must be relying on our stuff. Yeah. So if we can disconnect the energy storage device from the monster, it'll probably won't be able to sustain itself. It'll go down and then we can figure out how to get our powers out after that. So she's like, yeah, that, that sounds possible. I've never seen one of these things grow this big on its own before. So Rogue is just like, suppose and if and probably aren't good foundations for a plan. So he just asks him, well, do you have a better one? He's like, no. So he's like, then suppose if is a go. So they just go and try and get the damn thing's attention. But of course, Rogue Son is saying, like, don't anybody get me killed. Got it? So he was like, yeah, awesome pep talk. So he's like, shut up, get moving. So they, like I said, they distract it or whatever, and it starts roaring at them and shit. And then that's where uh, Marshall does, like, this 
big ass leap and he's like want to see if you can hoover up my killer looks too but he kind of gets tossed back and then the thing starts coming for him and then we can see a wrench hits it on the side of the head which was thrown by rogue son so now he has his attention he's like here we go so he has it start like chasing after him and then he's like gotcha and he kind of she kind of like jumps down on it. she's talking about how she misses her wings as she jumps onto its back and then she kind of does this thing i don't know how she got this much strength to like kind of rope it and then just pull it like this where she's able to like fling it over herself like either it's very light or she's very strong but both of those things are kind of weird anyway so they have it down and then rogue son is just kind of saying like yeah it's not out and then marshall's saying like hold on you know i might be able to do something but he says no no more messing around and he tells Cassia, grab something heavy and finish this. And she's like, are we sure that'll work? She asks Marshall, and he's like, well, I don't know. And he's like, do it now. So she just hits the damn thing, like, on the containment thing or whatever, which actually does end up working after a nice brief explosion. It causes, you know, this this whole thing to happen. And then they all get their powers back. So that's where Marshall is saying, like, I can feel the connection again. Rogue Son is just saying, oh, thank God. And she's saying, hello, you. So he's saying, okay, well, I'm glad your just break it just break it plan worked, but double size is one hell of an unexpected consequence. Anyone have any ex experience with giant monsters? To which Rogue Son says, I've been married twice, so okay. Yeah, he, he does have, you know, more experience than everyone else, I guess. But anyway, Marshall says, my brain's not working. We're supposed to do something now, right? It's like, yes, we're supposed to save lives and protect the innocent. And today, that means showing a 20-story interdimensional monster what happens when you crash the wrong dimension. So Marshall's like, that was a much better pep talk. And Cassia agrees with him. So this is where they all do their like little transformation thing and quite honestly i am really glad that they did this i haven't seen fold out pages in a comic in a while i mean granted you know the image you're seeing on screen is completely different than what i'm seeing and holding in my hand but i gotta say it's pretty cool having you know the whole like you know double pull out page like that was pretty nice anyway so now that they're all back in their power suits uh inferno girl red says you're the veteran call the shots so he's like oh so now you're about respecting your elders so marshall's like all right if you're not gonna do it then i will so he's like fine punch it until it dies so with that plan they kind of shoot off to go and do just that so they start punching the shit out of it you know seems to be working and then marshall says wow we smacked the hell out of that thing and it did not give a hot shit and he kind of gets interrupted when it starts like spewing more energy at them so he says, okay, yeah, we got to shut this down fast. I've got an idea. So he tells them, get some distance, then loop back towards this thing. Make sure you come past me, real tight formation. I'm going to railgun you. So Rogue Son is just like, railgun? What the hell is that? He's like, we don't have time. Go. So we see where they do it, and then they manage to, like, punch their way through the damn thing, leaving, like, this hole here or whatever. So he says, well, that didn't work, but I've got it now, so... Inferno Girl Red is like, you look like you're about to explode. He's like, it's fine. Something I've been, you know, working on. Never had, you know, enough practice, I'm assuming, is what he was going to say. But then we see where he's able to summon the entire robot this time. If you remember in the past, he just summoned a hand one time. So this time it's the whole damn thing. So he brings it out. And it's kind of like a Power Rangers thing where it's like they bring in the Megazord to fight the giant monster. So that's where she's saying, well, that's new. He's like, shh really got to focus here so it starts fighting against the monster but we, we can see where it's not really having the desired effect and he's even saying it's not strong enough i need more of your juices to which she's like first of all ew second of all wasn't our energies mixing how we got into this mess in the first place to which rogue son's like yeah she has a good point he says look i know i screwed things up i'm a mess i'm not the radiant black the world needs but i can do this so he just tells him you know please trust me and she's like well I think we should. He doesn't say anything, but they just end up helping out anyway. So we go back over to the robot, which is still struggling. But when it gets the infusion of all of their powers, now it not only is able to cause this explosion, it also appears to have wings. So it starts blasting the shit out of the monster using like a combination of all of their powers while it's up in the air. And then we can see where it's causing Marshall at least a little bit of distress. And she says, I have no idea what's going on, but it worked. So Rogue Son says, I have a million questions, but we should probably get somewhere a little less conspicuous, right? So he's like, could I, uh, can I get a lift? I'm feeling a little sleepy. So Rogue Son's just like, no. And then she kind of looks at him. He looks at her and she's like, oh, damn it. So she's the one who ends up carrying him back as they're flying. And then they end up in this like barn or whatever. And he's saying, I'm sorry one of my guys kept you here for so long, Cassia. And she says, it's all good. One of my guys was a big 
part of the problem too. Besides, I'm glad for this experience. This journey of mine is going to take time. And I think I needed the reminder that that's okay. That I'm not the only one capable of protecting the world. So Rogue Sun's just like, speaking of that, please don't ever come here again. So Marshall's like, what? But the railgun attack and the robot, it was so cool. She's like, it was extremely cool. So next time, party at my place. And that's where she kind of like teleports out of this dimension. So he's just there like, deal. And then he says, hey, Marcus. And then he says, what I was saying before, I think there's some something coming, something big. And if it gets here, what I saw... I don't think I can fight it alone. So he's like, I don't know. That was an awfully big robot. He's like, look, I don't know how time stuff works, but if this is real, when the time comes, will you help me? And this is where Rogue Sun is just like, all right, you want some advice? He says, yes, desperately, obviously. So he says, you can't rely on anyone but yourself. But if you front up and face whatever's coming, despite knowing you'll likely lose, then when they put you in the ground, no one ma who matters can call you a coward. The rest, you've got to figure out for yourself. So he's just like, I really should have asked Cassia. So he's like, well, yeah, no argument there. You all right to fly yourself home? He's like, well, he calls him kid. He's like, kid, what happened to me not being much younger than you? But yeah, totally. I just need to have a little. And then he falls asleep on top of like the hay bale. So he's just, Marshall's just like, huh. I mean, not Marshall. Um, the hell's his name? Marcus. He just like sighs. And then he like goes out and he comes back. He puts a blanket on him. Very cute. And that's actually where this particular story leaves off. But there's a little bit more. There's a slight epilogue here. Where we can see, I'm assuming this is after, like, the fight or whatever, where this little, like, creature comes out. And it kind of sits down, you know, kind of does that thing where it's like, oh, well, the story isn't really over. But then as it's just kind of sitting there looking all somewhat cute, all of a sudden it gets completely just smashed into the ground. And then there's this person saying, alien threat has been neutralized. So it's, I'm assuming it's a she. So she says, too bad it was kind of cute and kind of gross. Ghost, let's keep an eye out for world-ending threats moving forward. We don't want to keep missing the party. So we can see where that's kind of also a solicitation for the dead lucky. And that's where the story fully ends. But yeah, this kind of set up, you know, the, the other heroes, Inferno Girl Red and Rogue Sun, and apparently Dead Lucky. Apparently all of these characters are supposed to be getting like their own, you know, individual books. And then Radiant Black is going to keep doing its own individual thing. But first they had to do this little team up to kind of like establish, you know, that they are all within the same... Uni well, so I would say same universe, but obviously Inferno Girl Red is from a different one. So overall, like I said, this was a long book, but it was entertaining. I, I liked the whole little, you know, the whole little convention of the road trip. So that way they could try and go get back their powers. You know, it was brief, but at the same time, they made it, you know, very obvious. It, it took a while for them with each of them having to drive and someone else is asleep. So they were at it for a while trying to get back to, you know, getting their powers. But overall, it, it just made for an interesting story. I thought the dynamics were really interesting. Marshall is just, he's just a dumbass. So, I mean, it, no matter what, so someone was going to end up being annoyed with him. But overall, I, I thought it, it did pretty good. I'm actually looking forward to reading, you know, these other two, well, three, you know, other, like, individual books for Rogue Sun, Inferno Girl Red, and um, and for Dead Lucky. But there, I think there was actually another one. Isn't there Radiant Red? Yeah, Radiant Red is also going to get a mini series. So... Yeah, we'll see what ends up happening with all of that. Like I said, when Radiant Black first started, I um, I was not all that hyped about it because like it was hyped up pretty big in the in the comics press, you know, leading up to issue number one coming out, and then I read it and I was like, well, this is just kind of like disappointing. Like, there's not much here. It was mostly just like Nathan trying to figure out how to you know be an adult. And then, you know, things kind of escalated when he finally figured out how to use the powers and he died. So, well, seemingly died. And then it moved over to Marshall. And the story kept getting even more interesting, you know, with his whole struggle and, you know, going through all everything that he went through just to try and get Nathan back. And now, you know, it's actually opened up. It's starting to broaden into, you know, a fully realized, you know, individual universe. So I actually do enjoy it. I actually really like this story. So... I'm going to keep checking it out. I, I'm glad that, you know, someone's trying to do superhero stuff, even though it's still very much, you know, Power Ranger-y with, like, the whole, like, individual color schemes, and that seems to also tie into, like, their names and shit like that. But, I mean, you could tell, like, these are the same guys who are working on, you know, like, Power Rangers, so it kind of makes sense. You know, they made that very popular. Why not go and you know, make your own, you know, property of that? So they've got that thing going on, and... I really do hope that this actually goes somewhere because, like I said, I enjoy the story. I enjoy the books. 
I enjoy the characters more than I did when it first started, which is, that's always a good thing. It doesn't have to be a winner right out of the gate, but as long as you get to something that's actually enjoyable, you're okay in my book, so... Yeah, I think that's about all I can say on this particular video without making it much longer than it already is. But I don't know if anybody out there picked this up or if you're pick keeping up, you know, with the whole Radiant Black universe. I know that I do have people who watch, you know, my videos reviewing the comics or whatever. And I'm always glad to know that y'all enjoy those videos. Those seem to be some of the more popular ones without people talking about it all that much. So I'm always happy to see that. That's, that's totally fine with me. And that's why I felt I needed to make a review for this particular book. I didn't review the last issue of Radiant Black. Black, which was mostly just about you know the pink one what was her name Ava it, it mostly it was just kind of her like origin story of how she got the power and how she met up with you know the yellow one so there wasn't a whole lot there but you know I did read it so I'm looking forward to seeing what comes next in Radiant Black now that it seems like we've kind of touched on each of those characters hopefully they'll just continue with you know the overall story so we'll see what happens but yeah, I enjoyed this. Feel free to share your thoughts with me down below in the comments section. And if you enjoyed the video, make sure that you like the video, you're subscribed, you have the notification bell hit. If you would like to share out the video, then do that because I definitely highly appreciate it. But if you're done here, then go and read a book, possibly this one, if you can find it physical. That's always a good thing. But if not, then I will see you on my next video.